ஞானம் உரே யாவரும் கேடீர் செம்மொழி வலையொலி யூடியூப் சேனல் இந்த சேனலின் மூலமாக அந்த வலையொலியின் மூலமாக பல்வேறு தகவல்களை தினந்தோறும் நாங்கள் வழங்கி கொண்டிருக்கக்கூடிய அந்த நிலையில் சிலப்பதிகாரம் என்ற தலைப்பில் ஒவ்வொரு பகுதியாக வழங்கக்கூடிய அந்த தொகுப்பை முழுமையாக கண்டு பார்க்கலாம் The title of this lecture is Employment of Similes in Homer, Milton and the Sangam Poems. If in the 18th century Johnson said that illustration and ornamentation are the two functions of a simile, more than eight centuries earlier, Yelamburanar one of the celebrated commentators on Tolgapiyam has observed that a simile must clarify what is not evident and please the hearer by being an object of beauty. It is now emphasized in the West that the images used by a poet should be functional and drawn from life. Shakespeare is praised for using such images and avoiding bookish ones. The fact that bear baiting, a common Elizabethan sport, was used effectively by Shakespeare and not by any of his learned contemporaries is said to testify to his poetic genius. Milton is condemned for his lack of visual imagination and Shelley for preferring abstract images to concrete ones. Hume, Pound and Eliot felt that images are the very essence of an intuitive language. Creating one powerful image is to Pound more praiseworthy than writing hundreds of melodious lines of meaningless words. Tolhapir's awareness of the prime importance of the poetic image is evident in his statements on Iraichi and Ullurai. The Tolhapiyam Sangam tradition underlined the importance of visual images. While choosing his images, the poet is directed to keep in mind the character's status, the range and the limits of its experiences and activities and the objects with which it would be familiar. It is surprising to note that in addition to the striking similes which remarkably serve the functions of illustration and ornamentation, the long-drawn epic similes for which Homer and Milton have been long receiving high praise are also to be found in the Sangam classics. An in-depth comparative study of these would demonstrate <coughs> that the ancient Tamil poets were far ahead of their time in their understanding of the nature, function and the potentiality of a simile. It has been stressed by Homer scholars that simile in Homer is not decoration but a dynamic invention. Besides simple similes, Homer employs similes that develop themselves. In the section entitled Watching on the Walls of the Iliad, we come across two similes which are complete in themselves and which stop at A is like B and are not developed further in any direction. Describing the elders of the people who are sitting with Priam, the poet writes, Now through old age these fought no longer, yet were they excellent speakers still, and clear as cicadas who through the forest settle on trees, 
to issue their delicate voice of singing. Such were they who sat on the tower, chief men of the Trojans. There is a simple comparison between eloquent old speakers and the singing creatures cicadas and no details about the latter that are not relevant to the comparison are given. In another passage, Priam compares Ulysses to a ram. Truly, to some deep fleeced ram would I like him who makes his way through the great mass of the shining sheep flocks. In the fourth book of the epic, there is a striking simile direct from the experience of life to describe Athene's successful attempt at brushing an arrow away from its mark. She brushes it away from his skin as lightly when a mother brushes a fly away from her child who is lying in sweet sleep. But in the typical Homeric similes, there is a development of not the thing described, but that to which it is referred. In the 16th book, for instance, the Myrmidons led by Patroclus are compared to wasps. Straightway, they poured forth like wasps by the roadside, which boys habitually provoke, always taunting them. Wasps, which have their homes by the road, thoughtless boys, they make a common evil for many people. Those wasps, if some traveler goes by, unwittingly disturbs them, summon up all their defensive spirit, and each one of them flies forth and fights in defense of his offspring. With heart and spirit like theirs, the Myrmidons poured them among the ships. The enraged soldiers here are not compared to lions or tigers, but to provoked wasps which are aggressive, scary and wild. This comparison leads to a fascinating picture of the life of wasps. The Iliad has many such similes which are based on familiar scenes of life and deal with subjects remote from the heroic world such as small boys beating donkeys, flies clustering around the milk pail and men arguing over boundaries of their fields and women staining ivory. At times, even an elaborately marked out double comparison may be used by Homer. For instance, the assembly stirred like the long waves of the deep of the Icarian Sea which the east wind and the south have raised, roaming down upon them from the clouds of Father Zeus, or as when the west wind comes and stirs a field of tall grain, swiftly rushing down upon it, and the ears nod before the wind, so stirred their whole assembly. A simple simile may be followed by a typical epic simile when needed. For instance, but Patroclus stood beside Achilles, shepherd of the people, shedding warm tears like a dark watered spring which pours its dusky waters over some sheer cliff. Seeing him swift-footed, godlike Achilles pitied him and spoke to him winged words. Why do you weep, Patroclus, like some little girl who runs beside her mother and bids her take her up, clinging to her robe and hindering her as she would hurry on and looking tearfully up at her until she takes her up? Like her, Patroclus, do you shed soft tears. The heart of Ulysses is compared to a dog in a long-drawn simile and the worried hero to a man holding a stuffed sausage in another, both of which would not have been approved of by the Tamil poetic tradition. 
which censured the bringing together of the great and the mean or the sublime and the ridiculous here is the here is the description his heart was fa fairly howling with fury as a dog seeing a stranger walks around her helpless puppies and barks and gets ready to fight so his heart howled with anger at their wicked arts acts so he talked to himself and his heart to obey and remained brave and unshaken but still he kept tossing this way and that on his bed as a man holds a sausage stuffed with fat and blood over a great blazing fire and turns it now this way and now that in his eagerness to get it roasted quickly so ulysses tossed and turned following in the footsteps of homer milton uses a number of epic similes but milton critics have drawn our attention to the astonishing complexity and variety of their logical forms distinguishing between the shakespearean and the miltonic simile b rajan states that in the former a is like b in certain respects which are made clear whereas in the latter that is in the miltonic simile there is a slender resemblance between the objects compared cleopatra in shakespeare's antony and cleopatra cleopatra for instance compares death with the lovers pinch which hurts and is a desire the one serious charge leveled against milton's similes is that comparisons sometimes seem curiously thin with only slender grounds of resemblance between tenor and vehicle christopher rix contends that milton often uses similes with a clear sense of the fact that they don't fit exactly james waller defends miltonic similes on the ground that they serve the four functions of illustration ornamentation aggrandizement and prolepsis to aggrandize someone means to make him or her seem richer or more powerful or more important than the person really is to aggrandize something means to make it more impressive than it really is a simile is said to be proleptic when it prefigures a future event the devils thrown out of heaven are compared with leaves and masses of seaweed scattered by powerful winds and with floating corpses and broken chariot wheels in the sea this is milton's comparison he stood and called his legions angel forms who lay in trance thick as autumnal leaves that strew the brooks in valambrosa where the etrurian shades high overarched imbower or scattered sedge a float when with fierce winds orion armed hath vexed the red sea coast whose waves overthrew bucerus and his memphian chivalry while with perfidious hatred they pursued the sojourners of goshen who beheld from the safe shore their floating carcasses and broken chariot wheels so thick bestrewn abject and lost lay these covering the flood under amazement of their hideous change the comparison makes the fallen angels seem ridiculous satan lying chained on the burning lake is compared to a sea beast by milton that sea beast leviathan which god of all his works created hugest that swim the ocean stream him happily slumbering on the nave foam the pilot of some some small night foundered skiff deeming some island aft 
a seaman tell with a fixed anchor in his scaly rind moors by his side under the lee while night invests the sea and wish to mourn delays the extended comparison here implies that just as a mariner mistakes the huge beast for an island which may provide shelter to him he is going to mistake satan for a well wisher it is not necessary that the additional details have to be proleptic or essential for a full understanding of the comparison as t s eliot observes the reader is always delighted by the happy introduction of so much extraneous matter satan's shield is compared to the moon viewed through the telescope by galileo a contemporary of milton for whom milton had great admiration this is the comparison satan's shield is compared to the moon as seen by galileo his ponderous shield ethereal temper massy large and round behind him cast the broad circumference hung on his shoulders like the moon whose orb through optic glass the tuscan artist views at evening from the top of fezol or in valdano to decry new lands rivers or mountains in her spotty globe the fig tree whose leaves adam and eve chose to cover their waist is compared to the banyan tree found in malabar but there is a pleasing description of the indian tree that is the banyan tree is described by milton like this though unwarranted by the comparison the fig tree not that kind for fruit renowned but such as to at this day to indians known in malabar or deccan spreads her arms branching so broad and long that in the ground the bended twigs take root and daughters grow about the mother tree a pillared shade high over arch and echoing walks between they are off to the indian herdsman shunning heat shelters in cool and tends his pasturing herds at loopholes cut through their thickest shade so this is is a description of the banyan tree there may even be an element of disparity in some similes used by milton satan looking up at the entrance to heaven is compared with jacob the stairs were such as were on jacob saw angels ascending and descending bands of guardians bright when he from esau fled to padan aram in the field of lus dreaming by night under the open sky and waking cried this is the gate of heaven the one obvious resemblance is that both jacob and satan saw steps leading to heaven's gate but a deeper similarity of situation may be seen satan like jacob is escaping from retribution and has come to a critical turning point after his vision of the cosmos his heart will be hardened but jacob is awed and repentant and takes a vow there are more such similes in which the vehicle is partially suppressed or compressed into elusive form there are three similes comparing the garden of eden to mythological gardens this is the description spot more delicious than these gardens feigned or of revived adonis or renowned alcinous host of old laertes son or that not mystic where the sapient king held dalians with his fair egyptian spouse we come across comparisons with double or triple vehicles satan while tempting eve 
pretends to be full of zeal and love for man he is compared to the ancient greek and roman orators this is the comparison as when a old some orator renowned in athens or free rome where eloquence flourished since mute to some great cause addressed stood in himself collected while each part motion each act one audience ere the tongue sometimes in height began as no delay of preface brooking through his zeal of right so standing moving art height upgrown the tempter all impassioned thus began milton critics have identified even a few comparisons that appear to have two tenors after satan succeeds in his evil enterprise sin and death leaving hell follow satan to the place of man here is the description what they met solid or slimy as in raging sea tossed up and down together crowded drove from each side shoaling towards the mouth of hell as when two polar winds blowing adverse upon the cronian sea together drive mountains of ice that stop the imagined way beyond petsora eastward to the rich cathayan coast <laughs>